So welcome to the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. Time and again, we bring in world-class speakers and business leaders across the world in the field of entrepreneurship, treasury, VC, private equity, hedge funds, and conduct various programs and webinars in different formats. Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series is one such format where we learn from industry thought leaders about their experiences of running their businesses, opportunities and challenges they encounter, and broad global trends they see for the future. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Goenka, founder and CEO of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in one-stop treasury and foreign exchange solutions for companies across India for the last 17 years. And today we have Mr. Sudhir Shetty. Hi, Sudhir, thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure having you, Sudhir. Sudhir is the founder and chairman of Chirate Ventures. Chirate is one of the leading tech VC firms in India with an excellent track record with over 1 billion AUM, 125 ventures, three IPOs and 43 exits. It has backed homegrown unicorns such as First Cry, Flipkart, Lenskart and Policy Bazaar. Welcome Sudhir, how are you doing today? Thank you very much, a pleasure to be here. Glad to have you as a part of our Treasury Elite Entrepreneurship series. In the next 30-35 minutes, would love to learn from your experiences and the latest trends which I'm managing in the VC space. So the, uh, this is a personal question. Now, I ask this question to a lot of entrepreneurs and CEOs and founders that it is just not about the money after a certain point of time. What keeps you excited every morning and get to work? Or if I ask, why do you do what you do? It's fun. Uh, I think uh, very few instances are there when people like us, um, you know, uh, get a chance to back very interesting entrepreneurs who are brilliant, uh, world class, uh, and help them grow their organizations from, um, you know, uh, very small organizations to very large organizations. Uh, oh, and uh, and and the important thing is that these companies are not independent. And I truly believe this because we changed our whole investing methodology um, to, to look at what businesses contribute to uh, business and society. Today, our agri-tech companies uh, have influenced uh, the uh, income of over 3 million farmers. Uh, today, we have influenced through our uh, climate companies, uh, gas, uh, gas house commissions, gas, gas uh, emissions uh, through various uh, companies which we have in that space. Um, to me, it's very important that technology be used in such a way that it can influence solutions to business and society which have never been uh, solved before. That's what technology companies do. And the market is very interesting. You know, up till about, I would say, uh, pre-COVID times, uh, we all used to uh, do our MBA learning and put what is called TAM, the targeted market. But after that, we found that during uh, COVID times, 70% of our companies grew faster than pre-COVID times. In fact, 40% of them took a step of selling their products and services outside the country uh, overall. And the scale was astounding. Now, this could not have happened if there was no technology platform. So our mindset changed in the market and the entrepreneurs changed our mindset and said, look, in India, if you want to provide healthcare, we should target a 1 billion people who need efficient healthcare. There are the 1 billion Indians who need insurance. There is 1 billion consumers in India who need lending. There is 150 million farmers who need solutions to improve crop productivity, where 70% of the agricultural land is half acre as an average, right? There is businesses which need lending. So if you look at, if you look at every single uh, 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 business need in the market space or consumer need in the market space, right? The scale has been massive uh, overall. Today we have, and it is so exciting. We have now three companies in the next few years, starting this year, approaching a billion revenue. I never thought 
that a startup could become a billion revenue right so the opportunity to back entrepreneurs who are audacious and who are doing something which not, nobody has done before because that's the only way to come in where the business model the revenue model technology and product and go to market is all new and in a an end situation not a or situation that is the exciting part overlay this with a very thing a very important thing avishek the average age of the entrepreneur is 24 years old mm. right and which why is this innovation and agility happening because the the entrepreneur is young and there's no legacy there right they want to come out of where they are working and change the world i think mm. india is giving that massive scale right now which i have never seen in my 20 years of investing and that is so exciting right now no excellent 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 so so the you have seen this business very very uh, closely for the last many years and the business of vc investing looks very glamorous you know? we we have all had our shares of ups and down would love to know some of the milestones and learnings in your entrepreneurial and investing journey i think milestones is is one way of looking at it but our vision my personal dream was to build an indian vc firm uh from india and which is what we are doing and which is what uh we think we have we have achieved uh so far and what that means is that we are we are entrepreneurs i call myself a venture entrepreneur and there's no difference between an entrepreneur running a tech fund a tech company or me running a fund um but what is important is the rules of the game to build a firm like a vc firm or an entrepreneurial company in consumer is exactly the same put your head down execute well that that rule doesn't go away right mm. and think of differentiation so for instance a major milestone for us was in 2013 when we started raising capital from india mm. right the first time a vc fund went and raised capital from india today 50% of our capital comes from india and oh, we developed that right okay. uh, 50% fund by fund but overall we raised uh, our, our total aum we managed across five funds is a billion and out of that 425 million is indian capital now to us that was innovation uh, a different product mix uh, we change our strategy literally every fund by fund we said no every fund must perform better than the previous fund um, we said there is no there is no luck here you know people are asking me that uh, what's the ratio of successful companies and we discovered that look there's no ratio there is a science behind venture investing there is a portfolio mix there is a product mix there is a process for decision making if this process has an sop behind it plus it has intuition also right yeah. and the way to build a there's no book which says how to build a there are a lot of books which say how to build a novel there's no book there's no mba course right so that knowledge has to be passed out in the corridors uh, hmm. so i think that's the exciting part and there are many milestones we almost died once uh, hmm. and we were short of capital uh, indian capital was the opening point uh hmm. fund by fund our funds are doing better we our our strategy is changing rapidly uh and we i think one thing constant which uh, i have learned from entrepreneurs and hopefully we are doing this is a have a belief that india will scale it's a long term market that belief is un you know shattered right now is absolutely brilliant and i had that belief in 98 when i started investing when there were just four of us in the market and i have that belief today second is execute well just put your head down when markets are down and there's nothing called markets are down it's just that capital is slow how can markets be down do a billion people don't need healthcare do a billion people don't need lending do 150 million farmers are going to stop thinking yeah, yeah. that i don't need my uh, yeah. crop productivity they're not stopping thinking so to me the market side of it is not yeah. down 
Yeah. It's just that capital availability yeah. is slower. Yeah. That's yeah. acceptable. Yeah. 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 That's a very, very valid point and a very different and interesting way of looking at things. I think I learned something today. Markets are not down. It's only that the liquidity is slow. Uh, so the, uh, uh, as you rightly said, intuition is a very important part when you are actually investing. Apart from uh, you know, the promoter's competency, you know, his energy, the business model and the market size. And... Lately, we had seen a lot of trends emerging in the VC space, which was fintech, deep tech, ECSG, ESG, blockchain, uh, various themes we have seen. What is a very strong trend that you are seeing right now where the large VC money is going across the world? So I call sectoral trends as transitory trends. Correct. The reason is in India, depending on the time, every sector has to grow. You yeah. tell me which sector will not grow with a billion point three people, right. right? With 400 million consumers, uh, sorry, businesses, with 450 million children who need to be educated, 150 million farmers with six people in each family, 600 million agriculture dependent individuals. Every sector has to grow. There's no question about it. So to my mind, every sector will grow. There'll be times when they don't grow, there'll be times. And, you know, Web3 or... AI or data science is a is a is a flavor of based on uh, expertise that flavor comes in and it stays. These are not transitory. Mm. Right? What is a, a strong theme which has always been there is innovation, deeper technology, and I'll give you examples of this. And most important is entrepreneurship. Let's start with the basic first, right? What is a, what is a long lasting trend? <clears throat> Last year, we saw 3000 companies from which we invested 25. This year, we are already on a run rate to see 4,000 new companies, right? Now, the trend of entrepreneurs coming in with new business propositions is unstoppable. And that is where I'm saying, some will come in fintech, some will come in health techs at some points of time, right? Every sector will boom and then take a rest. You see, you know, I've been in this for 18 years now. Every sector booms at that point of time as an investor, it's very important not to get carried away and put more money. Yeah. When yeah. you build a company, you build how much money is required in that company. Oh, yeah. The yeah. second trend is technology. I think that's very important to understand. Technology is a very important tool for solving problems which have not been solved before, okay? And these are business problems. Again, I take the example, very simple. We invested in a company called KB Coles, KB Colors. And the vision of the entrepreneur is 90% of the world's colors which are used in textile and beauty game, uh, products, etc., are chemicals. His vision is to change the world and make sure that colors are extracted out of waste, uh, soya, et cetera, and they don't harm environment, they don't harm human beings. That, he's the only kind of company in the world, and by the way, he's based in Pune, and we are the first investors, right? So, do we have another company like this? Yes, we have another company uh, called Emotics in uh, Consumer Robotics for Children, okay? We have a company called Play Shifu uh, in STEM education. We have a company called We Innovate in uh, an antibacterial uh, catheters, right? Which are based on silver nanoparticles. And by the way, India consumes five crore catheters, which is the biggest need, biggest source of uh, spread for infection, right? By the way, I'm not an impact fund. We're a commercial VC, right? Mm -hmm. um, you take minus zero. They are building a technology for um, uh, driverless automated vehicles. And their testing was done in India. Okay, They will compete with the Teslas of the world tomorrow, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I think I can name so many examples uh, where the baseline is entrepreneurship with innovation and agility. Next layer is technology. And the third layer is a very long-term trend of deploying risk capital. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. That is where our mindset is very important. Right. 
This cannot be funded by banks. So these three layers are constant layers because India is producing entrepreneurs by gallons, if I may say, and that is an unstoppable trend. Now you take the verticals and sectors. At some point of time, they will take a breather, but that's not a bad thing. Hmm. So every sector has to use technology. And you will find that India is unique because technology which originates from India is priced lower, which means when it goes outside the country, the margins increase. Right? Hmm. Today, today we also found that companies can scale massively. The, the revenue of all our companies put together today is $2 billion. And 10% of the revenue comes from international sales now. That scale I have never seen before. You said 10% is coming international, 90% is domestic. 90% is domestic. Right? That's awesome. It's a 2 billion revenue. The CAGR is 63%. This, this new economy, which is digital in nature, hmm. right, is here to stay. Whether it is commerce like Flipkart, uh, e-commerce was a big buzz. Then came vertical commerce. Then came marketplaces. Then fintech. Then health tech. Then so those are not phases. They come and they stay because then mm. it becomes normal business after that. Mm. Yeah, it's only the valuations which correct when too much money starts changing a sector at abnormal prices. But the I agree with you. market should agree with you. Yeah, so it's like I mean I'm not uh, uh, I'm not uh, sort of uh, commoditizing it, but uh, I think it's very important that uh, to compare with debt. Uh, please understand when uh, markets are up, and I'm not, not talking about our markets, I'm saying market markets are up, right? More debt goes into the ecosystem. And when markets are down, less debt, because that's when people say, Have I given more debt? Hmm. Similarly, in the VC world, this is happening. We believe that consistency of Indian capital or Indian VCs uh, along with the international VCs in India is a very good combination because um, people who are based here, VCs like us, um, we don't have access to huge amounts of capital. International VCs have access to huge amount of capital. So I keep saying that, look, uh, valuation driving up is by international firms and not by us. <laughs> we are the recipients of that, of that benevolence, which is great. Yeah, the results of Tiger Global and SoftBank have kind of, uh, you know, hit badly. No, I think SoftBank, Tiger Global, uh, and all the other international firms, uh, you know, yeah. they play a very important, please understand, India has absorbed $200 billion worth of capital in the last six years. 95% is international capital. So we yeah. can't do without international capital. Right. It is to be respected. It is to be quoted that international capital come. Now in the next five, six years, I believe that in the, the total capital by PVC in tech in overall will be 500 billion investments, right? Mm. Now, what actually is very important to me is, is Indian capital becoming more than 5%. On a conservative side, I think it will become 10%. But will it become 25%? I don't think so. And that is to do with the fact that, for instance, Indian capital has to pay higher taxes than international capital, which doesn't make sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. So there are many details which you have to go to, but Indian capital is here to stay. There are family offices, there are uh, there is SIDBI who's doing a phenomenal job in funding startups through uh, almost 80 or 65 funds they've funded. Mm -hmm. um, there is NIF, there is more coming in. Um, there's family offices who are scaling up. So I think this industry of the new economy is here to stay. Let me share with you the scale. You know, in 2007, up to 2020, the total startups angel funded was 11,500. Out of which 3,500 went to series A and 1,250 went to series B and above. The revenue of these companies based on our data which we have in 2021 was $20 billion. Hmm. That's not small. In the hmm. next five years, with all the mathematics which we have done, the revenue from these companies could cross, including the new ones, will cross $200 billion. Hmm. Right? And 
that is humongous this new technology industry is going to be bigger than the it services industry the it services industry is humongous and they have done enormously successful job in the market space to create a niche for themselves in the world this industry the startup technology product and saas and fintech industry etc in the next few years not more than 5 years is going to be bigger than the it services industry hmm. Hmm. so the, what kind of an uh, incubation setup that india should have you said 4000 entrepreneurs coming up opening companies i'm sure everybody doesn't get an equal exposure how how can we get a system in place so that we get more matured entrepreneurs going forward they are able to more more uh, capital and ultimately the success to go to the final round keeps increasing so this is an open market situation i don't think you can you can say that the indian entrepreneurs have to be more mature indian entrepreneurs are world class okay uh, today first cry is the largest company in that category in the world maybe here lenskart by volume is the largest in the world uh, overall uh and i can take the list longer and longer uh, as such so i don't think we can we don't need a planning commission to say we need more mature entrepreneurs it's a market situation the more competitive the market becomes the more competitive our entrepreneurs will be and they are audacious already so mm. do we need more incubators no there are more than 600 incubators in the country and accelerators mm. is that enough they'll always need for more <laughs> but and those are coming in but yeah. we don't need physical space for that we need mental or mentor space for that i think Correct. the more entrepreneurs get mentored the industry will become far far better right yeah. mentoring is what makes a difference it's not physical space and not giving a plug point for a laptop mentoring how to grow a company so please understand 24 year old entrepreneur never grown a company audacious idea doesn't know how to do pricing uh, many of them don't know how to do balance sheets right so that that can only be solved by mentoring and not the planning commission and that's where the the number of mentors it's increasing but the number of mentors in the market and i would encourage every single professional in the market space to come and say i will pick up one or two entrepreneurs and mentor them whether they belong to the chemical industry or whether they belong to the uh tech industry or the vc industry or or government i mean there are people sitting in government right they are such good people they know how governance can be done so effectively having a million mentors in the country is going to be worth its weight in gold so you are right right in fact the trend has already started whenever i am meeting people um all the exo level people either they are angel investing Yeah. It's not only because they want to make money; they want to be part of the ecosystem in precisely mentoring uh, people uh, about their business. And even the promoters whom I meet, they're like, "Okay, but what's happening new in the industry? Let's let's engage with some young guys of IIT. Let's understand." Like you said, your com- company for uh, you know, makes colors and use, does not want to use chemicals. And this host of textile entrepreneurs, I'm sure, would like to engage. Precisely. Try- so, by the way, do I know the textile industry? No. so how do so our challenge is how do we get kb coal founder arjun to meet the top 35 to 40 textile and garment guys in the country the moment you do that you have one big company here in the country yeah. right that's what they're doing i just want to mention one more thing i think you you hit the nail right on the head that um uh, in ultra high net worth individuals and families uh, who have capital surplus capital they are wanting to get involved in this absolutely i mean we if you look at us we have today about 200 indian investors in our fund right and the quantum of capital they have invested in the fund is about 425 million in the last 7 years it is not small that's 2 million on average each investor is putting in if you take an average right now the question is how to so we did one thing we how to get another 1000 investors to get convinced about this market that is a big thing so we started a program called the midas program mm-hmm. and the midas program is 
has a has a has a ninety minute session called the science behind venture investing. Interesting. We have covered about nine hundred individuals and family offices in the country saying it is this is not ratios. This is not I invest in twenty companies and two will succeed. It is not that. There is a science behind it. There's SOPs behind it. There's a product metrics behind it. There is there's a lot of science behind the discipline and the SOP, etc. Once the understanding happens, their ability to take a call and invest more capital into the uh, startup world through VCs or outside becomes much higher. So we wanted to scale this up and say how it's like it's like a VC or a PVC university, if I may say. But it's very interesting. We the industrial uh, base of India, right, and the younger generation are willing to come in. and we are willing to expose that through the bidas program we love to help you with any of your initiatives it's a very very interesting initiative so they and i'm sure a lot of people they want to do it but they don't know how to go about investing often i hear that uh, don't take me otherwise a lot of people who don't understand this business they take vc as gambling money but it's not that it's their understanding which is not much on and the markets have become matured there have been exits there have been world class companies and I, as you rightly said capital is needed from domestic i mean how till what time can we only depend on international capital uh, you know i think that 95% number is still 95% number for a pretty long time right the uh, it has not improved a lot no. and still we are little uh, concerned whether it will hit 80 or 70 or something like that you know because it is it is gold is still a favorite asset class and well, land think, is still a favorite asset class i think it will uh, the reason for is being that people are seeing returns people are seeing top 10 percentile and top 25 percentile returns from indian vcs okay and the important thing is that you start small and then as you grow bigger you learn about the industry and learn about how investing is done um that's going to change the game uh so as i said um, you know it's very important for indian entrepreneurs or rather indian family offices ultra high net worth individuals indian family wealth is 3 trillion dollars in india and i keep mm. saying india has the capital mm. right uh, we have a company called wina last year they lent to businesses 4 billion dollars it was off balance sheet which means there are people who need the the credit and there are people who know how to who who normal in a bank it's, it's so difficult to get a loan these these people have a technology platform or you call early salary right they are doing humongous in terms of uh, the growth of uh, lending and by the way npas are closer to zero mm. right so your technology platform can solve things which in a conventional world it's inefficient very interesting very interesting thank you thank you sudeep thank you for uh, taking out time a uh, uh, lot of your thoughts are very very useful for the forum especially people who are new in the world of vc investing even people who are invested they have to understand that markets are not bad it's just that liquidity is little slow which happens every 10 years i mean we have seen it in the past and that's the same but the the trend of technology the trend of uh, entrepreneurship is here likely to stay this year we have 4000 next year i'm going to, i'm sure it's going to be 5000 6000 and we say the trend has caught up and it's going to run in like a wheel on its own yes it's, it's it's a very very interesting time for it and i i wish that well, as you mentioned 3 trillion dollar worth of capital all of that capital comes into the uh, private markets so that our entrepreneurs can thrive and grow for many years to come thank you so much thank you sudeep thank you